uh, hello students i am advocate sokoni i've been asked to help you with uh, what is called the administration of uh, estates this happens when when uh, somebody dies and uh, you are left um, with um, a duty to uh, to distribute the the inheritance. You now, when somebody dies, there will be um, beneficiaries who, you know, who will be looking at um, seeing as to how will the, the 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 late estate be shared or divided, if you like. So the first thing is that when somebody dies, you will go to home affairs and and apply for what is called a, a death certificate, right? A, de a death certificate means everything that belonged to the deceased, all, all his accounts or her accounts, if you like, if she's a woman, will be froze, frozen. Immed immediately, a death certificate is issued. Automatically, the accounts are frozen, right? What does that mean? This means you cannot be able to withdraw anything from the deceased accounts. Right. So what you will do, you will take this document. Um, let's, let us say you are an attorney and you are helping your client who, is, um, uh, who has just lost her husband. So what you will do, you will have to take care um, the death certificate and also the, um, the the ID of the deceased. It, obviously, it will be now nullified because it will have that stamp that says deceased on, on the first page, on the face of uh, of the ID. With these um, new IDs, that is now the, the card IDs, they normally make a hole in it to nullify it. Once it's got a hole, then we know that uh, that ID belongs to a deceased person, right? It's done uh, at the home affairs. They've got their, their special machines to, to make the holes on the, on the deceased uh, identity, identity document. So, um, we will take that the certificate also with the uh, original copy of the deceased ID, whether it's, this is a book ID or the card ID to the home affairs. No, 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 you've, you've already got it from the home affairs. Now you're taking it to the master of the high court. Okay, the master of, of the high court is an office where anyone who has an LLB degree can go and work. You don't have to be admitted to work at uh, the master's office. You as student, the, the moment you pass your LLB, you will be eligible to go and apply at the master's office and you will be called the master of the high court. So any person with an LLB, LLB degree, I, I, I remember that um, the act says you need to have a diploma, some, some diploma in law. So LLB, that means you are more, more than qualified to be a master of the high court. So the master of the, of the high court is a division that supervises the administration of diseased estate. Like I've said, the purpose is to ensure an orderly winding up of financial affairs of the disease and the protection of the financial interest. What do I mean by winding up? Winding up means counting. This is called liquidation. We are actually doing what is called the liquidation of the deceased estate. You are now counting all the property that is owned by the deceased. This will include uh, the cars, the money in the bank, the houses he owns. Some people will own, will have uh, houses to let, you know, some they built uh, rooms to let in, in, in Aitop or in, in Mbangini, in uh, Skawini. Uh, then you need to have what is called an inventory. An inventory is a, a register where you will record whatever is owned by, by the deceased. 
that is now the inventory because you want to liquidate it. What do you mean by liquidate it? You mean you want to know the value of the property that belongs to, to the deceased. Okay. Now the question is, what happens to a person's estate when, when, he, when he or she dies? At, at death, the estate of the deceased, like I've said, uh, is then frozen. What do I mean by frozen? Frozen means the account is frozen, the, uh, the, his account is frozen, right? That means you cannot withdraw money from that account. And also it's, it's automatically frozen that nobody is allowed to use the cars, to use anything that belongs to, to the deceased because it is now officially frozen. So anybody, if uh, somebody dies in your family and you see your brother going up and down with your, with your, with your father's uh, baki or car, then you should stop you because what happens is the value of that vehicle decreases. The more you use a vehicle, it decreases. It decreases. Even if you go and try and sell it, they will look at the kilometers. If you have traveled so many kilometers after the death of the disease, that means the value of that vehicle is, is, has decreased because if, for instance, the car uh, the, the, on the speedometer reading, the kilometers were maybe 50,000 uh, kilometers. Once uh, your brother uses it and uh, the kilometers are now 150,000, that means that car is no longer worth worth the money that it would have been had it not been used while it was at 50,000 kilometers. So that is why everything is supposed to be frozen and nobody is allowed to use it because that property does not belong to one person. It doesn't even belong to, to his wife. It also belongs to, it belongs to the wife and the kids and who, whoever uh, is involved. Let us say your father died and left a will. So you, we don't know what will uh, transpire with the will. Maybe the will would say uh, he is taking everything that belongs to him to give it to the neighbor or to his girlfriend or to his mother or to his grandfather. It, it depends as what the will specifies. Right, so at death, the estate of the deceased person is frozen and no one may withdraw funds from the deceased bank account or deal with any of the estate's uh, asset without the necessary permission from the master of the high court. So if, like I've said, you can work at the, at, the, at, the, at the master of the high court office. Then if anybody wants to use a vehicle, they will have to come and seek permission from you as the master of the, of the high court. If the disease was married in committal property, the joint estate still will be frozen, meaning, meaning everything that belonged to him and his wife is frozen. Is frozen until the, um, uh, because this is a joint estate. Now, joint estate means if somebody has got money in the bank, the, if married in committal property, that means Let's say you have 100,000 rand in the bank. That means 50,000 belongs to the wife because you are married in commercial property. And 50,000 rand belongs to you. So at death, everything, everything is frozen, right? Everything is frozen. You cannot withdraw that money. Although we know that the wife has 50,000 rand in, uh, in that account. So what, what happens is that uh, the wife will be advised by you as an attorney to go to the the, the master's office to do what? To get what is called a letter of authority. You will get a letter of authority and um, once you've got that letter of authority, then you can withdraw, but you can't withdraw all the money. You will only withdraw what's, what belongs to you with that letter. So you need to be careful. You can't take all the money or, or just because you've got a letter of authority, then you start selling the house without knowing what the will of the deceased said, right? So, um, so in this situation where I've said the estate is now frozen, so this stress often, often creates hardship for the surviving spouse, especially when the bank accounts were all in the name of the joint estate or in the name of the deceased. It creates problem, right? Okay. 
Then now let us now talk about where does this thing of the joint estate come from, the origin of a disease estate. A disease estate comes into existence when a person dies leaving property or a document which is a will or purports to be a will. That's very important. It is either a will or it purports to be a will. A will that a will will be a will that is uh, formally done and it has got no so to repeat myself i was uh, just saying um the origin of uh, a disease estate a disease estate comes into existence uh, when a person passes away or dies leaving property right or a document which is called a will right or something that purports to be a will i say purports to be a will because sometimes a person will, will, will draft a will, a proper will. A proper will will be the one that has uh, all the pages uh, initialed by, by two witnesses and the testator, right? The testator is the person who is making a will. He is called or she is called the te 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 testator. He signs the, at the bottom of, of, the, of the page and in a place called testator. Portion where you say testator, then he, then he signs the there must be two witnesses. So if a will is signed by two witnesses and each and every page is initial, that is a will. And in the will, the person must say, I bequeath my whole estate to so-and-so. That, that is a will. But there is something called that purports to be a will. Uh, it's always contested. Somebody, somebody will have a will, but uh, when he is on his dying bed in hospital, he just asks a nurse, a nurse, please just give me a piece. And then he writes that um, I am revoking all the all my wills and I now uh, bequeath my uh, whole estate to my firstborn son or to my lastborn daughter. And uh, But the other will was giving the estate to everyone and then he changes his mind because he sees that uh, the other uh, children are not behaving or they are extravagant or they are now into drugs. So he knows that his, his money will be um, used for drugs. So he, now he's changed his mind and he's saying he's bequeathing his uh, estate to someone else. So that is where now we'll say something that purpose to be a will. It will be just in a, in a scrap paper and signed by him only, no witnesses. Courts tend to approve those wills. They, they validate them because they say this one, this looks like the wish of the deceased. Especially if both parties, those who are contesting, are saying, indeed, it is, he, it is his handwriting. So the courts will always condone that and say, no, that will must be, must be acceptable. Okay. Such a state must be then administered and distributed in terms of the deceased will. So if there's a will, then the estate will be um, distributed in terms of the deceased will or, or failing a, a valid will in, a, 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 in terms of the Last Asset Succession Act 81 of 1987. So the, you've done, uh, I think you've done something on Sussex, law of succession. So, the law of succession is in terms of uh, Act 81 of 1987, right? The procedure which must be followed to administer the deceased estate is prescribed by the Act. Which Act is it? The Act that governs the late estate is called Act 66 of 1965, the Administration of Estate Act 66 of 1965. Those two acts are very important. Uh, it's the Succession Act and the, the, the Estate Act. Also, there is another act which is also important, um, the, uh, the Recognition of the Customary Marriage Act 120 of 1998. Those are also very important uh, uh, acts that you need to uh, take into consideration when you are administering a, a, a wills. So, um, also, um, let's now come to um, 
to who, when and why, uh, when and by whom must the estate be reported. That is very important as to when must the estate be reported. You need to take note of that and make sure that you don't just report the estate um, after a long time when the person has died. The estate has to be reported in accordance with the in accordance with the with the act. So there is there is a prescribed method of doing it, and um, um, there is a method. There's a prescribed method of doing that, right? Um, the, um, um, okay, let's just hold it there for a while. And now, which death are we talking about, right? The death of a person who dies within the Republic of South Africa and leaves property or any document that is a will or is intended to be a will. And also the, the death of a person who dies outside of the Republic of South Africa, but who leaves property and or any document that, that is a will or is intended to be a will in the Republic of South Africa must be reported to the master of the high court. So those are the deaths that are reported to the master's office, master of the high court in South Africa. So you cannot report the death of somebody who was born in Kenya or Malawi and died in Malawi. Only SA citizen citizens or people with permanent residence or people who are naturalized as South Africans must be, must be uh, uh, their death should be reported to the master of the high court, right? That is somebody with an ID document of South Africa, okay? Right, now, where must the the question now that follows is where must estate be reported? As I've said, um, the, 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 uh, the late estate uh, must be reported to the office of the master. So where the deceased was living in the Republic of South Africa, the estate must be reported to the master of the high court in whose area of jurisdiction the deceased was living 12 months prior to his death, right? What does that mean? That means the, the, the death of the deceased will be reported to the master of the high court of that jurisdiction. What do I mean by jurisdiction? Jurisdiction is that uh, when, uh, if somebody dies in Mpangin or in Amtunzin, the the, 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 juris, the court that has jurisdiction or the master's office that has jurisdiction is the one on Smith Street. It's on number two Devonshire Road, uh, 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 Deben. It's, it's off Smith Street. That is, the, that is the office of the master of the high court. So you don't go to court. It's said it's the master of the high court, but there is no court going on there. It's only the offices of the master. It's only the, the offices of the master. There is no court going in there. So if you go there, you will then be able to report the, the death. And that must be done um, immediately after the death, right? For a person who has been living in that jurisdiction for something like 12 months prior to his death. Right, so you've lived there for a year, then you might, although you were, you, were, you, were, you were born and stay and have a house in Johannesburg, but because you were living for 12 months in, in, in Embangin, then you will have to go to the master's office where? In Deben, number two, Devonshire Street, right? Where the deceased was not living in the Republic of South Africa at the time of his death, the estate may, may be reported to any master of the high court, provided it is reported to only one master. So you cannot report it to all the masters. There's one master, uh, office of the master in Peter Marisberg on Church Street, uh, just next to the court, 
or maybe the, the city hall, there is one there. Uh, uh, it's on Church Street. If you ask anybody once you come to the Peter uh, 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 City Hall or court, uh, maybe the High Court, then they will show you where the, the office of the Master of the High Court is. It's not far from the High Court. It's just nearby. And uh, it's also nearby the City Hall in Peter Marisbeck. Or the one I've told you now, which is in Deben. So if somebody is not living in South Africa, but he is a South African, and he dies overseas, you can only report to any, any master of the high court. But you, do, you cannot report the death to each and every, or maybe to two uh, uh, offices. Only one office will be legible to, will be eligible to uh, take that report. Right? And affidavit, this is how it's done. An affidavit in which it is stated that the letters of executorship have not already been uh, 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 granted by any other master of the High Court in the Republic of South Africa must also accompany the reporting documents. That is very important. When you report the, the person who has died outside of the Republic, then you will have to write a, an affidavit that confirms that no master of, of the high court has issued a, a letter of executorship or a letter of authority and the, 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 the death has not been reported to any other uh, master of the high court in the republic. Right. Uh, from, from, as from the 5th of uh, December 2002, all magistrate offices are designated service points for the master of the high court. You know, uh, before 2002, uh, only the, the master of the high court in, in Deben would, would uh, receive um, these um, notices. But as from the 5th of December 2002, things changed, right? In the government gazette, it was gazetted that all magistrates' offices are now permitted to um, to take this report, right? Uh, to be service points of the master's high court. That means they are work. They are service points. They're like uh, help desks. You go to the magistrate. The magistrate, uh, the magistrate office will then take all the necessary information and uh, and do exactly what the the master of high court will be doing, right? So. And two, um, the master's court office are designated service points for the master of the high court and estates can then be reported there. However, there's a qualification. These service points have limited jurisdiction. They have limited jurisdictions that you cannot just take any. You will have to serve a certain area. All estates with wills as well as estate that exceed 125,000 in value will be transferred to the provincial master's office, the provincial. When you talk of the provincial master's office, that is the one that is in Deben, right? In Deben, uh, on Devonshire Road, and the one in Peter Marisbergs. Those are provincial uh, masters of the high court. So if the amount exceeds 125,000, then you cannot report it to at the magistrate. It has to go to the provincial office. Okay, hope you understand that. And also, if the estate value is less than 250 and there is a minor A, legal aid um, or even the, even the law clinic for that matter can be contacted to assist in this regard, right? Where the estate value is less than 250 and where is more, then you can, it's less, but there is a minor child. Then the, the, the legal aid of South Africa or even the law clinic of the, of, of the University of Zululand can be contacted to assist uh, in this regard. So you need to know those, that's very important. And this is examinable. You must know this and you, you will have a question where you will be asked the procedure of uh, reporting uh, the estate of the master and what is for what is done when you are winding up the 
the, the deceased estate. Okay. When and by whom must estates be reported? Now, here we are going to be talking about the, the time limit, the time limit of reporting the estate to the master of the high court. The estate of the deceased person must be reported to the master of the high court within how many days? 14 days of the death, of, of the date of death. That is now after the death, you count 14 days. And 14 days does, does not include uh, uh, Saturdays and Sundays or holidays. It, 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 it means working days, working days, okay? The death is to be reported by any person having control or possession of any property or document that is or intends to be a will of the disease. So who can report? The person who can report could be the child of the disease, the wife of the disease, or any or the brother or the, or the parents of the disease can, can report the death. People who are sort of beneficiaries or hold property of the disease. Now, you've, you've, I've got this, uh, I'm staying in this house, and this person just gave me the house to stay in it, and now he is dead. I have a duty to go and report it, because then they will find out whose is it, and uh, if uh, there's no will, it will be divided in the form of interstate succession. You know what is interstate succession? That means there is no will. Testate, that means there is a will. So those, those are the people who are eligible to report their um the 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 death to the to the master of the high court right um and also the estate is reported by lodging a completed death notice and other reporting documents with the master which may be obtained from the office of the master of the high court or from the magistrate so the 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 the, the, the then you will be lodged, lodging a, a a a completed death notice Right form. It's a form that will be, you will be given at the office of the master of the high court to fill. It will have a, any everything, including where you will put the what is called the inventory, and uh, you will put the list of the dependents of the of the deceased, and uh, you will list everything that he owns. Uh, the money is in the bank. If you know the money is in the bank, you will list all of that. All right. How then? How do you then report the estate to the master? or to a service point of the master of the high court. What is the service point of the master's court? I've just told you now, the service point of the master's high court is any magistrate court as contemplated um, from the government gazette of the 5th of December 2002. You must remember that, that is very important, that as from the 5th of December 2002, magistrates were then allowed to do what? To accept death reports and fill those forms uh, uh, for rounding up the estate of the disease. Right, okay. Um, and then how do you report, um, how do you report an estate to the master or to the service point of error? This is how you do. Um, um, you then, uh, go like I've said. You will go with um, the the death certificate, right? You, you've got the death certificate in your hand, and you've got the right. Um, the okay. What uh, I've said, the um, jurisdiction amount for reporting the. Lady said to the magistrate court is 125,000 125, rands. That amount has changed to 150,000 rands now. That was the amount that was stipulated in uh, 2002. Now in 2022, if it's 150,000 rand or less, then it can be reported to the magistrate court. Right. Uh, we were talking about what is needed for what is needed at the master of the high court in order for you to 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 report the the late estate you will have 10 i think it's 10 or 11 documents that will be needed the first one will be the original death certificate so you must have the original death certificate of the deceased and also you must have 
the original or a certified copy of the mar marriage certificate or a divorce decree. Why do we need a divorce decree? We need a divorce decree because we don't want a situation where someone will come and say, no, but this was my husband, I have kids with him, so I'm entitled to, to be a beneficiary in uh, his estate. So if there's a uh, di divorce decree, then we know that the ex-wife cannot come and claim the, the, the deceased estate. The other, the third document that you will need is, is an original will. You don't come with a, a copy of a will. You need an original will. And you also do not come with a, a certified copy of a will. What is needed only is the original will. Also, another document that will be needed is a completed death notice. What do we mean by a, a completed death notice? When somebody dies, you go to a funeral parlor or um, yeah, a funeral parlor where they will fill something called BI. I don't know what BI stands for, but that is a, a that is a, a, a completed certificate of a death notice. BI means is 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 what what you do when you are. Uh, 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 giving the notice that somebody has died, so you want that as well. And that's an original from the, from uh, from the funeral parlor, or like or or, uh, uh, or they will eat you or doves, or they will give you that uh, that that uh, that document, which is a what a completed death notice. It's called BI if you like. Uh, the fifth one is be a complete a completed next of kin affidavit. So somebody must write an affidavit to the fact that somebody has died and how they are they related to him. That affidavit will be needed, right? And also you will, you will need, like I've said, a completed inventory showing all the assets of the, of the deceased. So you, like I've said, you will have an, an inventory that says he's got monies in the central bank or capital. He's got so many cars. He's got two houses. He's got seven cars, it's got a tractor, it's got all what it's got will be in that uh, document which is called the inventory. And uh, also the other uh, documents that will be needed will be nominations by all the beneficiaries for the appointment of the executor. So what will happen is that if somebody dies and uh, he has um, say uh, uh, five children from his marriage and also children born out of the marriage, uh, those, everybody who, who, who stands to benefit will have to fill a nomination form where they will be agreeing to have whoever they choose to be an executor. Right? So it must be somebody who is um, uh, who has been agreed upon by all the beneficiaries and also that person must also have a certified copy of the of, of his or her identity document, right? And also number eight will be declaration of an existing marriage. Why would you want? Uh, why would somebody want a declaration of ex existing marriage? Um, that document is is, is is normally done at the master's office where somebody is married. Um, by um, way of customary uh, customary rights, that is now the customary marriage, then you'll find that the marriage is not registered. That there is no marriage certificate to that effect. And so what happens is you will have two representatives from the groom side and two representatives from the bride side to come and confirm that in fact there was lobola paid and there was a ceremony to deliver the, 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 the bride um, to, to her homestead. The, now, the, the issue about the ceremony is it can, it can also be done at the bride's uh, house. It doesn't have to be, to, be, to be taken to the groom's homestead. So at the, at the bride's homestead, the, the ceremony can be done and it's, it's, it's acceptable. Once those minutes have been taken, and a, a declaration made, then a declaration will be made to say the marriage exists. That is where now we find the declaration of the, of the existence of the marriage. 
And then the, the two last one will be a list of creditors and debtors. You, you will need to, to state uh, so-and-so uh, uh, is owed by or owes a bank so, so much money and owes your neighbor 200,000 rand and owes whoever so much. Then you, have, you must have a list of those creditors and also debtors, somebody, people who owe the, the deceased. You can also make a list so that you can go and uh, collect the money so that the money can be divided amongst the beneficiaries. The last one, the last one will be the, um, the acceptance of a trust um, uh, executor by the master of the, of the, of the, of the, by the, uh, by the master of the high court or, or, or the acceptance of the trust uh, which will be held by the, ma the representative, representative of the master of the high court, right? So though that document should be made in duplicate and um, uh, it must be together with the ID of those two applicants. That is now the applicant of the executor and the, and, I mean, the, the ID document of the executor that is applying to be executor and or, or the ID of the representative of the master's office who is going to be in charge of, of, um, of that estate. Or else it could be an attorney. Sometimes you will get an attorney to be an executor. Then that attorney must also bring his or her copy of the, of, uh, of the ID document. So those are, the, those are the 10 requirements that you need to report the the, the, the deceased estate. So you must expect that in your exams. And I think uh, because there's 10, it will carry 20 marks. So you've got 20, 20 marks free of charge. If, just, if you just mention all 10, then you've got your 20 marks. So let us end our lecture there for now. What are your questions? Anybody has questions? If, uh, we have also dealt with uh, the situation where you die without a will. So when you die uh, without a will, your estate will be devolved in terms of the rules of interstate succession. Your assets will, will not go to the state. That means they, they will not be given to the state. The rules will take place into consideration uh, factors like whether the deceased was married in communal property or how many children uh, he, he had or whether they have any surviving uh, relatives that is not a father or siblings or brothers or sisters those are the people who can take your property if you die without a will right now let's talk about the guardian fund the guardian fund works like this the purpose of the guardian funds uh, is to protect the funds of minors that is minor person minors or persons uh, lacking legal competence if uh, let's say uh, you are. You have been declared as. Um, um, you have been declared as extravagant, or um, um, you've been declared that you need a curator to administer your stuff. Uh, or, for instance, if you have been declared a delinquent, right? You can. Uh, uh, that means you lack the competence and capacity, right? And also. Um, uh, people who are absent, right? People who are absent and un untraceable, uh, who are also beneficiaries to that estate, the guardian fund keeps the money uh, 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 of that deceased estate, or any other f or any other fund received through a, a governing act or a court order. Then the guardian fund will keep all those monies for all the beneficiaries, right? The functions of the guardian funds are um, um, it administers money that has been received lawfully from sources such as the national treasury, attorneys, and banks. Okay, uh, the, uh, another uh, in entity that gives money to the guardian fund it will be the GPF, that is now the, 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 uh, the GPF for government employees. And also, the guardian funds is the, is the custodian of funds. Uh, ensuing that qualifying beneficiaries receive what is due to them with the interest generated. So the money kept at uh, a guardian fund will definitely 
uh, generate interest. So the government fund will keep that money and give it to um, the beneficiary when the beneficiary, beneficiary comes of age or when the time comes that uh, that money should be transferred to the beneficiary. Money which remains unclaimed in the guardian fund for a period of 30 years from the date upon which the person became entitled to claim the money is then forfeited to the state. If you've got money in the, uh, if you've got money in the garden fund and uh, you fail to go and claim that money for 30 years, it will then be forfeited to the state. I have an example of my nephew who divorced, whose father divorced from my sister and um, he is now I think he's a major in the in, in, in the in the army, the SADF, South African Defence Force. He's a major. He's uh, he's he's also driving helicopters, and um, his money will be forfeited to the state because after having told him that he must go and collect the money, he has refused because his father uh, uh, deceived him to say. Uh, the stepmother is actually his mother. So now they don't want him to know the real mother. And the real mother died, I think, in uh, 2006. So he uh, and um, he is eligible to go and claim the pension fund because, unfortunately, the mother is um, the mother is um, has got only one child that's him and so nobody else can go and uh, claim the money uh, as yet because the money has been uh, with the garden fund for so for so long right and also so it's just unfortunate that the master administers all the funds in the garden fund free of charge in most cases you'll find that people lose money because um, there are some sharks or greedy people who come to you and say uh, we, will, we will fast track your claim, give us 25%. It happened to my son. He lost about 180,000 rand because of those people. So you need to tell your clients that they should be careful of, uh, of uh, those characters that come and uh, take advantage of you know, young people because normally it's young people or people who lack capacity who have got money at the guardian fund. Right. The procedure of uh, claiming from the guardian funds uh, claims on behalf of minors and uh, state patients that is mentally dis disabled people in the guardian funds can be made by the guardian, a tutor, curator person caring for the minor until the minor reaches the age of maturity, right? Or the age as determined in the will, if any. So the, the will might say, um, uh, my my child can only claim the money when he reaches a certain age. So we know the age of uh, maturity. What do we mean by the age of maturity? Okay, then let's end there for now. Thank you.